I think to a lot of people, it feels very intuitive that certain openings are going to be like more suitable for players like uh, developing and trying to improve. And then certain openings are, well, virtually all openings are suitable for what we would call like a professional player, someone who's been playing chess for many years, has seen a lot of different positions, has seen a ton of different openings and can now kind of expand and explore a lot of different um, ideas. Uh, like I switched up my openings a couple of times when I was like 22, 2300. And um, I, I felt like it wasn't, it wasn't like this incredible undertaking. It was just a matter of like learning a couple of new positions, I already had some experience. And I felt like I could be a lot more flexible in, in the positions uh, I choose. Um, whereas I feel like when you suggest openings for new players, there's kind of like, well, there's kind of two, two things they're always asking. Number one, like what's the best opening or like what's, what are the best openings that I should choose from? And number two, what are the best openings that are going to help me develop as a player? Like which openings should I play in order to kind of maximize my chess improvement and get myself into the right kinds of positions? Um, because we all know, and I don't think anyone is going to be recommending uh, tricky and like trappy openings. We all know you can score a lot of wins with those, but that they're not going to be great for like your overall chess development. Um, so it's always kind of like balancing those two things, openings that are objectively sound and solid and openings that are good for like developing your, your middle game skills. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, my thinking was very similar to Eugene's and David's. Uh, <laughs> I, I struggled between the, the Berlin and the Marshall. I recognize that of course, lots of people have their preferences and, uh, people are mentioning the Petrov is another like mm -hmm. super solid opening. Um, from my perspective, it seems like there aren't as many takers for the Petrov compared to the Berlin and the Marshall. So these were just the top two choices um, for me. I put Berlin number one. I just feel like it's been like the top dog since, let's say, you know, 2000 with Kramnik. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically part of everyone's repertoire at some point, like Carlsen, Aronian, Kramnik, and Caruana. Like almost everyone is playing it. Not necessarily everyone plays the Marshall, even though it seems like theoretically the Marshall right now is also standing very well. So I put Marshall number two. Mm -hmm. Seems like um, it's just gonna be the most solid kind of world champion level opening. Uh, my third choice is the Sveshnikov. Because uh, I felt like, okay, first Gelfand, uh, like Eugene was saying, and then Magnus just kind of showed it's playable at the absolute highest levels. You know, you can have the best team in the world on the other side prepping against you and and i mean it totally holds up um so uh, i would say maybe it would have been higher but i guess the sveshnikov isn't for everyone uh because you have to be willing to play those extremely dynamic positions um and then i put nidorf number four nidorf has just been super solid for many many years uh mvl's playing it you know all the time it's part of uh, everyone else's repertoire at some point uh, as well. For me, my number five choice was the Caro, uh, mainly because I think it, it's uh, actually, it seems like a pretty decent surprise weapon, or at least it seems like what a lot of these top guys turn to when they're looking for an opening that is, yeah, just not going to be as deeply explored as some of the other options. And, and yeah, it can just be a little bit of a surprise. So it seems like a good choice to have in your repertoire, especially if let's say the opponent is only playing the advanced variation, you always know you're going to get like a pretty fighting game there. So that seems like a good choice uh, to me for, for the pros. Yeah, so I definitely hear what David's saying. I think it is beneficial to play different openings. Um, but I, I don't know, I feel like most players, they just want like, they just want to choose something, learn it, get comfortable with it. And then, then maybe they'll switch it up later. But for like certain time frame like six months a year maybe longer you know they just want to be uh consistent so my list for um beginners okay number one uh i'm gonna put the dragon okay good do, uh do you want me to write accelerate or do you want me to just write dragon just put dragon because actually i'm gonna include both i think uh, like if if I could just mold a new player, you know, and they uh -huh. leave their chest to me, I would have them play the regular dragon. Because uh, my feeling is that you you want to play sharp openings when you're developing. I feel pretty strongly about this, just based on my experience. I think it's much easier to teach positional chess to a sharp player than to teach a positional player how to be dynamic and be willing to take risk and sacrifice. You can do it, but I think it's easier to go from someone who like knows how to attack and now has to rein it in a little bit than the other way around. And I mean, people are 
obviously free to disagree. That's just my experience. So I would agree I, with that. I would okay. put the dragon there. It makes sense. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, there's this uh, there's this famous phrase like you know if you if you don't if you play the Karo Khan like when you're younger what will you play when you're older right you're able to, <laughs> yeah. to like calculate as well. Um, I, like but I think that. there's a lot of truth to that. And whenever I look at um, strong players like best players of all time or just like 26 2700s and like I look through their game histories like what they played when they were 1800 or 2000 like almost everyone plays like the king's indian at some point or like some version of that mm. not everyone plays something like the slav but everyone like plays some kind of really like sharp king's indian or modern like at some point you know they kind of like that's part of their uh repertoire so the dragon for me if you're someone that like really doesn't want to attack and you just want to be a solid player then I would go with the accelerated dragon because it's not quite as like hectic i think it's a lot more strategic than the mm. dragon and so mm -hmm. uh that's that's a good kind of choice um number two night yeah. <laughs> i think night okay. is just a good opening um i i think a lot of players worry uh t way too much about the theory that mm -hmm. they're not going to get hit with because like most players just play anti-sicilians nowadays anyway very true so mm -hmm. just go with night uh, i do feel strongly that the sicilian is kind of like the best opening for developing players for many reasons like you just get exposed to a lot of interesting positions uh, but also in terms of like the uh quality of the positions you're going to get are pretty good because like once you get some experience against the anti-sicilians you start to actually quite like enjoy them like as a sicilian player at first i was like annoyed by all these lines but now like i'm happy when i see a c3 sicilian i'm happy when i see anything other than like the super sharp main lines so if your opponents are not going to play critically against you and they're just going to play like normal sicilian moves then the night earth is great get the open c file and get that counterplay uh number three pretty similar in spirit i went with the con oh. i think it's actually like kind of similar to the night earth in that you're playing like more of a hedgehog style, but Khan is like really, really hedgehog style. Uh, I wasn't sure about this one. I don't think it's for everybody, but I think it's an interesting opening to play. And it does teach you a lot about um, how to play against the space advantage, how to try to create counterplay on the queen side. To me, the Knight Orphan and Khan at this level are honestly just very similar, but I put that number three. Um, okay, number four, I'm just going with E4, E5. And against like the Rui Lopez, basically anything, I think the Marshall is fine uh, if you're a sharp player. I think it's actually white that has to know more theory in the Marshall if they want to just not lose in the opening. Um, I have one student who has been playing the Marshall since he was I think maybe 15 to 1600. I showed him just very, very, some very, very basic ideas. And um, sometimes he just gets quick wins because his opponents make a mistake and they get checkmated. So I think the Marshall, like the actual Marshall Gambit is is easier for for black but i'm totally fine with the berlin i think if you want to play something solid then e4 e5 those positions are uh really really good for development uh and in fifth place i went with the Karo Khan. Uh, i think if you just want something super solid and you just want to play chess tomorrow and you've like never looked at an opening in your life <laughs> you could literally learn the Karo in like 30 minutes and you'll get a position you can get your pieces out and you can just play like normal, simple positional chess. I think the Karo is much, much better than the French in this regard, because in the French, you don't get your bishop out. In the Karo, you do. And I think that just makes life a lot easier for, for peasants. So that's my list. <laughs> OK, pretty good. I would actually agree with that list. Uh, there was a funny story. I remember when I was a kid in Russia, we played in some team competition. And I've never played e5 in my life. and. We knew who I was going to play. My opponent always plays into the main line of the marshal. And I was prepared, you know, by my coach to play into the marshal. And I just checkmated the guy. And I've never played in my life. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I agree. The marshal's very easy to play for black. <laughs> <laughs>d4 uh i put nimzo as number one uh -huh. so i think this opening has just been like ultra solid for many years um and i guess you know we got to recognize it's not like a complete repertoire of course because they can go knight f3 on move um three so i have the qgd as my number two choice mm. um kind of just goes like hand in hand with the nimzo um again just like kind of picking the most solid openings 
that I can think of. Number three, I chose the Slav. I think the Slav is also very, very solid. And um, yeah, I mean, just like rock solid for many, many years, world championship opening, et cetera. Uh, number four, I went with the Grunfeld. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like lately, actually, the Grunfeld has been a little bit um, on like shaky territory now that all these neural network engines think H4 is like a winning plan <laughs> in uh -huh. every Grunfeld position. <laughs> um, so I feel like the Grunfeld is on somewhat shaky territory. In fact, I even I feel like Siddler said something about the Grunfeld not being in, in great shape right now. Um, but it has been, I mean, like, yeah, part of the the repertoires of like so many top players that I think it still deserves to be on the list and it's a very sharp opening. Um, and then uh, my number five choice, I would actually consider this a little bit of a surprise weapon at the pro level would be the QGA. Because uh -huh. uh, I think only like Caruana and maybe Dominguez are like the top guys playing it regularly. Um, it's it's kind of like the Petrov of the, of the D4 openings. Like not many people play it, but it seems to be really, really solid if it's like really well uh, prepared. So that seems like a decent choice uh, to me. Okay, so um, yeah, my list is is again based on the openings that I think are just gonna be best for uh, one's improvement. Mm -hmm. I, I go back and forth on the top two, but given the fact that we do have to recognize that a lot of players moving up nowadays are just going to be facing the London. Even when I was moving up, it was kind of like just D4, C4, and then right. you chose your opening. Um, given that it's going to be half that and half London, mm -hmm. I would put Kings Indian number one, just because the Kings Indian is like a complete system mm -hmm. that you can play against any D4 sideline. Um, we haven't really mentioned this too much, but you can also play the Kings Indian against the uh, first move knight f3 and first move c4 right uh, which some of these openings you would have to figure figure it out at some point i don't think it's a really a big concern until you are actually somewhere in the range of like 2000 2200 but because um, you're not going to be seeing that much knight f3 c4 until then anyway but it's nice that against like the london you can just play the king's indian and the king's indian i think is quite um quite fun and dynamic against the london so if you're someone that's like always like suffering against it like yeah you can try the king's indian and get a pretty fun and uh, dynamic position. Okay, number two, uh, the Flamingo or the nice. Nimzo Bogo. Basically, yeah. Nimzo, Nimzo Indian, and in the off chance that your opponent doesn't allow it, whatever. Bishop B4 check, you can play <laughs> Queen's Indian uh, with B6, you can play um, D5. Actually, I think if you're like a really like wild and kind of like tricky player, uh, you could do the Nimzo and then pair that with the Benoni. I think that's actually totally reasonable. Some mm -hmm. players just really like the Benoni and they're they're drawn to it mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of suits them. And so I feel like they can absolutely play it and kind of work on their dynamic skills. Um, my number three opening is the Slav. <laughs> really, really matching Eugene uh, uh -huh. for now. Uh, I think the Slav is super solid and uh, I would say this is like, this is the Karo Khan of D4. If you just want a solid opening, you can learn it in like one 15 minute YouTube video and get your <laughs> pieces out. As long as you just, just don't bring your Bishop from C8 too early, like you'll be fine in the slob. That's like the only mistake you can really make. So I think that's a really solid opening. And it's also an opening that you can play basically until the GM level. Like it's just a very, very long-term um opening and i think all of these openings i was thinking about like what can you play for the long run and it will you'll get good at it you'll get good at playing these positions it'll be good for your development uh my number four choice is the grunfeld i think there is quite a bit of theory in the grunfeld and it's certainly not for everyone but like if you start out playing it and you suffer with it a little bit like if you suffer with the king's indian a little bit eventually you do learn how to play very uh, sharp dynamic positions you learn how to fight for queenside counterplay you learn how to play against the space advantage like so many interesting dynamic and strategic themes in the Grunfeld. Um, so I think there's lots of players who, you know, played it growing up and became really strong masters, IMs and GMs. So I just think it's like overall very sound opening. Uh, and then my fifth choice, uh, I'm going to go with the, the Benko. Mm -hmm. I know it's not a complete opening because you can literally avoid it with the first move knight of three. Um, so that's why, it, I mean, I think otherwise it would be even higher on my list. I think you can do some stuff against the London. You can play like some C5, B5 stuff or some kind of Benoni hybrid. I just think the Benko is actually really 
can be very overpowered at lower levels, especially if black is familiar with all the tricks and the tactics like knight takes e4 and queen a5 and all this stuff. Um, and, and white isn't, then I think black can have like a serious advantage, a practical advantage, just like knowing all the typical uh, tricks. I think the same goes for a lot of the Sicilians that we talked about earlier, like the dragons and night earths. If white is only seeing those like every once in a while and black is like super familiar with the tactics and the position, it can be, um, it can be a big practical uh, advantage at, at the club level. So yeah, that's my list. And I'm going to make fun of you guys a little bit here because <laughs> you guys are, you know, when you think about the difference between a pro level opening and a peasant opening, it has to do in usually when we think about it in terms of memorization and a lot of different lines and a deep understanding of different positions. And the King's Indian, to my mind, that's it right there. Memorization, all kinds of different methods of playing against you. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. So if that's your top opening for the peasants... Oh man, come on. No, I think I think you just get used to it and then you learn how to play that. And then, you know, one day you you switch away from it. Yeah, QGD, no, nah, I don't know. I, I think it's just like suffering. I think you're just like slightly mm. worse. Mm -hmm. And you have like a bad light scored bishop in every single game. And yeah, I don't like it. So you want people to play the Kings Indian to learn to play actively from bad positions so that they can eventually when they become pros, play the Nimzo and QGD, <laughs> never use any activity and just sit there and get draws if they're ever able to switch. No, not at all. I think you I think when you switch from dynamic openings to more solid stuff, you you bring all that stuff with you. Mm -hmm. Um and lots of positions in the Nimzo where you know you gotta you gotta play sharp and you gotta be ready to attack. Like the F3 Nimzo, for example, black has to be willing to just go all in and and, and fight back. So yeah, I don't know. I think you gotta, yeah, you gotta learn how to play with a fianchetto bishop, and uh, and learn how to like attack and and go all in. 